that promotional video didn't convince you guys about the exciting life of a Minneapolis resident, maybe the Harmar Mall will, which you saw spliced in there. What's up guys, welcome back to the Den Mall series. Today we'll be taking a look at the fabled and historic Harmar Mall in Roseville, Minnesota. Well, maybe not as historic as the South Dome Mall, but equally as interesting and still a historic relic of the Minneapolis Metro. I want to thank you guys for the support you showed on the last episode in welcoming me back to the scene. We're so close to 1,000 subscribers, so if you're watching and not subscribed, hit that button and like the video. It really helps out the channel and motivates me to keep doing this thing. Anyways, let's get started. So, to begin with a little bit of backstory, the Harmar Mall, which I actually believed was called the Har Har Mall for a really long time, up until I walked into this place and saw the sign. I don't know why, that's legitimately just what I thought. Anyway, the Har Mar Mall was constructed in 1961 when Harold J. Slawick decided to build a mall similar to shopping centers he had seen while traveling in Florida, naming the shopping center after him and his wife Marie, Har Mar. Willard Thorson, who designed nearby Apache Plaza, which would fail as a mall and be torn down in 2004, would design Harmar. Thorson stated, the mall consists of a long corridor, which zigzags at a series of angles that make the Harmar Mall truly unique. It features massively wide hallways and arched ceilings with large windows to allow natural light to enter the corridors. And yeah, when you're here, it's really interestingly shaped mall having no typical anchors but instead several large stores and se serving several smaller tenants. It's kind of just like a constant zigzag. You wonder when it's going to end, but it just keeps going. So yeah, walking down this corridor, you can see just the amount of empty stores. And um, the food court is down here, and it's, it's a very unique food court. You'll see that. In these halls, you can see the old mall plants, which haven't changed throughout the years, and I think it's really cool. Um, the mall, it just feels very, it feels very old. It feels like it's aged, um, but it's not like an ugly age. It's not like there's, you know, I mean, there's bricks on the walls, but it's not like other malls where they leave, like, crusty old bricks on the floor. And at the same time, Harmar hasn't gotten rid of all the old aesthetics and it hasn't replaced everything with flashy white tile but it keeps up everything and it it really it makes this mall look amazing it's just all the old aesthetics coming back here into this back corner i thought i was going to like a, this is like in a typical mall this would be like a, a bathroom area back here but no these are more stores back here and this is the food court so yeah welcome to harmar's food court it's absolutely breathtaking to be back here. <laughs> So the mall's construction, it cost around $6 million, and it took about two years to build. Um, during the summer of 1962, Harold sadly would pass away, leaving his wife in charge of the construction. And Harmar would open that same year as the new mall in the city of Roseville, and it would enjoy several years of glitzy success in the city, being the go-to destination for all the middle-class shoppers, teens of the area, and just people in general it was it was a really it was a great community space in that time as the years went on things would start to get tough for them all in 1969 Rosedale Center would open literally across the freeway from Harmar being much bigger, more modern, and having anchors and tenants to feature name brands. To combat this, in 1970, the construction of a twin theater, Harmar 1 and 2, was completed. It was 
uh, at the time, the most luxurious theater in the state. And it would continue to win these state awards as the years went on, continuing to get screens until it had 11 screens total, becoming the largest theater in the state. This was in 1981, and that same year, disaster would strike. Here, this was a picture taken from our radar at about oh, 10 minutes before 4 yesterday afternoon, and there is that hook echo right there over Lake Harriet, southern Minneapolis. There it is. On June 14, 1981, Roseville was struck by a deadly EF3 tornado, which damaged much of the mall's facade and destroyed several businesses along Snelling Avenue. 83 people were hurt and one was killed. After a few days of assessment, an extensive renovation was done in the mall to update the appearance, modernizing it. This tornado, for years to come, would not be forgotten by the residents of the area, however. Wow, that got dark there for a second. Sorry about that. Um, here's a chipper commercial made just a few years later to get people back into the mall. Maybe that'll bring your spirits back up. Jazz, country, and classical recording. Mary Adams helps you with your holiday gift giving in suits, coordinates, and sportswear for the working woman. Then visit McChesney Jewelers for the finest gold and silver jewelry, watches, gems, and pearls. And here you can see the original arch ceiling, which is it's cool to be in this mall. It almost feels like um like like a train station, you know. I'm I'm just I'm walking down the corridor, just looking looking for my train. It's gotta be in one of these closed store fronts. Uh, as the years trickled in for this mall, a renovation would take place in uh, 1988, and that would add a few more large stores into the mall and a brand new food court. And I don't know if it looked different back then or if it was changed again, so let me know in the comments if the food court you saw is original because it was less like a food court and more like a like a food hallway in a way. Here we have his staples, and I wasn't quite sure what the case was here. If it was um, if it was closing or if they were opening a new location at the mall, because you look inside and there's just there's nothing there. So uh, let me know in the comments what the situation is at Staples, because I'm I'm curious what the heck is going on in there. Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, the mall would go through a slew of tenants and retailers coming and going. It would also undergo another major renovation and makeover, costing $12 million. Von Maurer would show interest in the mall, but the interest would never go anywhere. In 2006, the 11 screen AMC, which was once the largest in the state, would close permanently, being seen as outdated, with a much larger AMC multiplex being built in the city. Throughout the 2010s and up until today, a lot of the mall tenants would be converted so that they had mall entrances and outdoor entrances. 
which gives off a strange look from the outside, with the mall seeming more like a strip center from the road. Um, very deceiving, because when you're in here, you definitely get those uh, old indoor mall vibes. And it's sad. That's probably why a lot of people uh, don't know this place exists, or they just don't go here anymore, is because younger folks just think this is some strip center, when really inside is a beautiful mall. Coming up here, you'll see a small staircase which kind of winds down to this basement area by Barnes and Nobles. And no one's allowed to go down these steps, but if you guys have any clue what this used to be, please let me know in the comments. Um, also, speaking of the comments, um, I'm curious, what is your guys' favorite episode of the Dunmall series? Um, let me know below, and uh, I think it'd be cool to find out because uh, I've always kind of curious on what I can improve and what you guys like so yeah let me know in the comments uh, favorite episode of the series Today, Harmar remains a place for the community, with plenty of small businesses and discount brands throughout the mall. It feels dead, and you can see it in the closed storefronts, but at the same time, there's still life here. There's still people shopping and mall walking. It's that sense and all the history that makes Harmar feel like the ultimate community spot. It's not some super fancy schmancy, super regional mall. It doesn't have typical anchors or usual layout. and preserved through the hard times, through the competition and hardships and a literal tornado, and it's still here. Guys, I want to thank you all for watching today's episode. I had a ton of fun making this video and visiting Harmar Mall. If you're in the area, stop by and support this place. Just watch the recording. I was warned security here is tight and they hate photography. Luckily I got this place on their day off. Anyways, I'll catch you all next week. See you later guys. Peace out.